razor blades and marbles and things. Yes, and then regurgitates them up on stage. Mm. He's got incredible control of his abdominal muscles. Yes, he must have. Mm. Well, Simon wants to be the Australian Stevie Star. He reckons there's a market to be had here. His mother said he's been regurgitating since he was 12. Mm. Hello, Mrs Jarvis, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Yes, Mrs Jarvis, I'm Dr Marshall. We've established that the cube is stuck halfway along Simon's intestine and I'm afraid it might budge. Unfortunately, it's going to require an operation. Is it just straightforward? Oh yes, it, it should be. We have to check on Simon's history, but I don't think there'll be any problems. It's an interesting choice of career Simon's made. Oh yes, he just loves it. It could be dangerous though. Yes, it would be easier if he stayed on the doll, but regurgitating is his life. You've just got to let them grow and make their own choices. Sure, sure. Would you like to explain what you've just discovered? Yes. The operation on Simon has become a little trickier than we thought. I didn't realise he had such a history of failed regurgitation. You see, until you achieve proficient regurgitation, you're going to have a few accidents along the way. Maybe a diagram would help. You see, when you start training, you can bring up nothing. When you finish training, you can regurgitate everything. Does that make it a little clearer for you? Yes. So where would Simon be? Simon would be about halfway. He can bring up some things, but he retains some things. Let me explain by showing you how this ink gets into this chalk. No, that's okay. Okay, fine. Now, we've just discovered Simon has been opened up 17 times already, which has left his abdominal scar tissue as hard as concrete. It's almost impossible to go in that way. There are other options, but it will be up to Simon and his family. What sort of things has he had removed before? A wristwatch, a door key, four ping pong balls, and eight planets from a model Toys R Us solar system. But aren't there nine planets in the solar system? Mm, yes, there are. He passed Pluto during pre-op when he had to go to the toilet. A little like passing a kidney stone. Hello, Simon. Hi, Dr. Marshall. Simon, I didn't realise what a history you've had. Yeah, I've had a bit of trouble. Yes, and a lot of scar tissue has developed, and it would be almost impossible to open up your stomach again. I'm afraid the only sensible way to remove the cube is through the penis. The penis? Yes, the penis. Isn't the penis a bit narrow? Yes, it is, but the planet Pluto managed to get out that way, so we're hoping that your penis will work with us. But why not, you know, through the, the rear passage? Well, we could, but it's not so straightforward. There's a lot of shit involved. But won't it be painful? Simon, it will be excruciating, but you can have an epidural if you like. Oh, no, no, no. I'd like to have it naturally, without drugs, if that's OK. Sure, that's fine, Simon. Do you have any other questions about the operation? Um, when can you do it? I'm hoping we can do it this evening. What's the time now? 2.30. Now, ladies, it's a very tricky operation, so before we go into explaining it, I'll just make sure that your notes so far look vaguely like this. Please hold up your notes so that I can check to see that they're okay. Now, as I said, it's a tricky operation. It's only been performed a dozen times before, all by Stevie Star's doctor in Wyoming. Now, fortunately, via the internet, we think we have the procedure down. First of all, we have to get the penis to straighten. Now, we can either do that using splints, 
or using the issue of Ralph with Denise Richards on the cover. Once we get the penis to straighten, we enter through the tip, we move through the penile canal, through the bladder up to the stomach, attached to the cube, and it's all downhill from there. Now over here are the tools that we'll be using. A needle tongs and a hammer. Now we don't have correct needle tongs in Australia, but I've been able to fashion a pair using a skewer and a nail punch and some rubber bands. It's crucial that enough early momentum is gained so that we can force the needle tongs down into the penis. Pushing gently won't work. It needs a thrust, a stabbing action. It shouldn't be too long, Mrs Jarvis, if you'd like to help yourself to some coffee and tea or donuts over in the microwave. Okay? Yes, that looks to be quite straight enough now, Simon. Now, nurse, could you please mark a spot on the penis? Okay, now on the count of three. One, two. I told you, don't microwave the donuts on high. You twerp. Oh, gee, it sounded like a wild animal or something. Okay, sorry everyone, we'll try again. On the count of three. One, two. Oh well, nurse, I suppose we did our best. Doctor, how did it go? Unfortunately, Mrs. Jarvis, we had a few problems. I didn't realise Simon had been trying to solve the cube abdominally, and he had twisted one of the levels around to a 45 degree angle, a little bit like this. So as we extracted it, it became wedged halfway along the urethra, a little bit like a fish hook. Is it permanent? I'm afraid it is permanent, yes. But I have been able to drill a hole through the cube with a 1 16th inch fine plastics drill bit, so he shouldn't have lost any of his faculties. Can he still urinate? Yes. And can he still have children? Yes. And can he still spank the monkey? Yes. And can he still go to the beach? I'm afraid not, Mrs Jarvis. Somehow, on my knees, I lose.